Before we get to wave five, I just want to talk a little bit about our basic instincts again to ground the theory that I have about what wave five is. Um, our basic instincts as humans, food, shelter, reproduction, survival. But in looking at the way that we've related to brands in the last 150 years, I also saw that we have a significant collective tendency as a species. And that, and it's not just humans, nearly every species organizes itself in some type of pack. And I, I think that this instinct helps us create more security and, and gives us a sense of, um, it gives us an ability to survive better because we're somehow safer in groups with numbers. We feel safer and more secure. And you see this everywhere. You see this in fish, you see this in ants, you see it in birds, you see it in dogs, you see it in cats. This is a photograph that I took of sea lions in Alaska. It's like 30 degrees below zero, and yet they're still congregating together. You see it in apes. You see it in people, in the way that they organize themselves, the way that they telegraph to each other what they believe in, what they're a part of, where they belong. And you also see it in cultural movements. Hippies, Hells Angels, yuppies, goth, hipsters, and armies. Now we see that in armies because we can mass produce uniforms. We create this one homogenized look to fight for our belief systems or our religion or our values. And what once seemed exotic is now one of my students at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. And what once seemed tribal and foreign is a cashier at Trader Joe's. And what seemed unusual and even weird probably still is. <laughs> But the most pervasive PAC organization of all is one that we all belong to, and it's not a school or an organization, it's the family. And this is sort of the typical American family, an Amish family, an African family, a Muslim family. And what's interesting about the construct of family and the need that we have, the hardwired need that is created in our offspring with our families, is that given the choice, Children will choose, a baby will choose the connection to their mother over food if they had to choose one or the other. And from a scientific perspective, the need for our brains to connect with others, which is where this comes from, is what is now considered to be attachment theory. To feel secure when somebody is with you, to feel insecure when that person is absent, to feel anxious. And the origination of this attachment theory comes from John Bowlby's The Nature of the Child's Tie to Its Mother, in which early concepts of attachment were introduced in Harry Harlow's The Nature of Love, which, which is where these um, experiments were first uh, created. And it showed that infant monkeys first preferred emotional attachment over food, and that when babies have no relationship with a caretaker, they will fail to thrive. There was a really interesting article in The New Yorker two years ago about the punishment, the way that we punish people. And you can punish somebody physically, and you can punish somebody emotionally. When you punish somebody physically, it will take them in, in a, in a um, punitive environment like a jail. It will take somebody a lot longer to break than if you put them in solitary confinement. Somebody will lose their mind and have a psychological break in solitary confinement faster than physical abuse because that's how jarring and unnatural it feels for humans to be alone. But there's some interesting issues that are now happening in our culture that impact this. Right now, any psychologist will tell you that we feel happiest, we were talking about happy before with the students, happiest about who we are when we have secure feelings of attachment to other people. But there is a population trend that's really flying in the face of this need. More and more and more people are living alone. This is a chart that shows that single person households in North America are growing faster than any other demographic. 
In the United States, one in three households are comprised of one person, one person. By comparison, in 1950, one in 10. Since the 1990s, the number of people who live alone has increased by 21%. Now, first and foremost, I see myself as an analyst. And if you look at these types of numbers, this is statistically, it's way beyond statistically significant. It's statistically staggering. It's staggering to have that type of cultural shift in 50 years. 